Hi everybody. In this lecture, we'll try to take a look over the concept of moment of inertia, the second moment of area. Now friends, an understanding of this concept, that is the second moment of area, will prove to be very useful to civil engineers as the concept of beam design is directly related to this, deflections, how, how much load a member can carry, what are the stress cropping up, the bending stresses, all these things are related somewhat to this material or this property of the surfaces and that is called the second moment of area. Now let us see what second of moment of uh, second moment of area rather what it really is. Now, for example, now suppose I take the same example wherein I take some kind of a reference frame and this is denoted as y, this is denoted as x, and this is some kind of an irregular shaped body. Right. For example, I take this area which is nothing but is equal to delta ai. Right. And this and the distance of this elemental area from the x axis is equal to suppose yi and the distance of this elemental area from the y axis is suppose xi. So essentially the moment of inertia or the second moment of area of this elemental particle with respect to x axis is given as dixx where dixx is the moment of inertia of area delta ai with respect to x axis and this is essentially equal to delta ai into x sorry this into yi whole square right so if you find the moment of inertia of this whole body with respect to x axis then what I'm going to do is basically integrate this thing and ixx essentially is the moment of inertia of the whole body with respect to the x axis and this is equal to dixx integration which is equal to nothing but integration of yi square da and i is suppose any point in this body and similarly we can write i yy to be equal to xi square da. So this is nothing but if, there's a, if this da integration will give me area and this essentially is my centroid, right, xc where x is the distance of the centroid. xi refers to the distance of the elementary particle with respect to y axis of any elementary particle and xc denotes the distance of the centroid, right. So if this is my centroid, then this is my xc and this is my yc and ixx is essentially equal to a yc whole square. Now what is this thing i? This i is basically the moment of the moment of area that is we have found out the first moment of area right and moment of that first moment of area with respect to this x axis or y axis or whatever axis basically gives the measure of i right so essentially the second moment of area about an axis will give us the measure of how resistant to it how resistant it is towards bending with respect to that, that axis now i will try to elaborate what i meant just now for example i will take some kind of a rectangular cross section right for example, let us take this as my rectangular cross section. Now we know that for a rectangular kind of a cross section, the centroid is lies coincides with the neutral axis. So if this is my neutral axis or my centroid, and I'm going to find out now the moment of inertia about this centroid, right? And this be up suppose xx. So I xx is equal to what? That I am going to find out. How can I find this out? Let us take an elementary strip like this and let the area of this elementary strip be equal to dA. Now dA is nothing but is equal to dy. Suppose this is dy and this is suppose b. So dA is equal to b into dy and we know that ixx is nothing. If this is suppose y then ixx is equal to y square dA. Right. Or this dA can be said to be equal to 
y square into b dy. Now, this to get the moment of inertia of this whole rectangular section with respect to the x-axis, what I'm going to do is basically put limits. And this is suppose, the height of this is suppose h, and so this point suppose is equal to h by 2, and this is equal to minus h by 2. So it's from minus h by 2 to h by 2 basically. So we have b y cubed by 3 extended from minus h by 2 to h by 2. And essentially if we, if we calculate this, it will be some kind of a thing like 1 by 12 b h cubed. So i x x or the moment of inertia of the rectangular cross section with respect to x axis is given by 1 by 12 b h cubed. And i y y similarly if we have some kind of a cross section like this, right, and if we have to find the moment of inertia with respect to this axis, then what will be i y y? It will be equal to 1 by 12. This will be h b cube, or just the reverse, right. So, now the neutral axis is this axis, x x. And we know that sigma, or the bending stress, is given by m y by i where m is the bending moment, y is the distance of the point where we have to find the stress with respect to this neutral axis and i as we essentially know is the moment of inertia. So essentially the sigma will be minimum if i is maximum, i is greater. Sigma will be minimum if i is greater. And how can we make this i greater? Now what is this i basically? i is nothing but is equal to integration of y squared dA. So to make i greater, what I've got to do is basically, I've got to put this elementary areas as far apart from the neutral axis as possible. So essentially, if we have the same area, if this, if the rectangular cross section of, is of area A, and if we have some kind of an i section, which is also of area A, and the neutral axis, that is a symmetri as this is symmetrical, will be to the, to the centroid basically, so we got to put the area as far apart from the neutral axis as possible. And hence what we can do is that we can increase this value of i. And if we can increase this value of i, automatically this bending stress is going to decrease. And essentially bending stress decreases means that the bend that the bin can take in loads without that without not that much bending stress. So essentially it is more it can take in bending better. Right. So this is the whole concept of moment of inertia and I, in this lecture what I've tried to do basically is try to link up this moment of inertia I with respect to bending. In the next lecture I will try to find out how to find the moment of inertia with built up sections that are essentially and I will introduce the concept of parallel axis theorem and I, that's the end of my lecture, uh, this lecture rather. Thank you.